Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today, as you can see, we're going to do a vertical painting. It's going to be an acrylic and should be fun. We'll have a lot of beautiful colors in it. And of course, if you're enjoying these and you want to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now, just a minute ago, I went ahead and toned our canvas with a nice soft orange that we mixed up. I used primarily a little bit of yellow ochre light. You can see our, our paint there. It's been a little while since I've showed you our acrylic paint. Of course, that's available on the website. I also used some of our red and I just toned this area and then let it dry. And that way it gives us a nice surface to paint on. And if some of the canvas shows through, it helps the painting to kind of glow and gives you that oil painting look really nice. The other thing I've got going here is my foundation medium for acrylics. It comes in a nice little bottle. I've got it sitting here in a cup which is very convenient. And I dip into that generally instead of water. It really helps the paint to flow evenly and it's very nice to work with and it's easy to paint on top of that too. All right, so let's go ahead <laughs> after all that. Let's jump into the painting. I've got my I've got my flat brush here ready to go with some red and blue. I'm going to just mix those together and a little bit of mud is okay and some white Let's see what this does for us. We're going to do a beautiful, colorful sky today. Well, that's nice, but it needs to be a touch more colorful. We're going for color. And this is a, a real place. Actually, a good friend of mine sent me this photo. And I thought, wow, that really would be suitable for acrylics. And it was vertical. So, you know, I don't like to paint 18 by 24 verticals. But I, I'm okay with them. Um, I'm okay with it with a smaller canvas. There we go. Mainly because they don't film well. There's nothing wrong with doing verticals. They just don't film that well. <laughs> so there you go. If I'm painting, I gotta be filming. That's the rules around here. <laughs> oh boy, that's all right. Let's take a little bit of red. Make a softer purple. Good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and continue to build up our sky with layers of color. So you kind of see the first layer. See how it's a little bit brown? Because of course we took the orange and the yellow and put them over the blue. Thankfully we didn't get green, we did get brown. And that was kind of to be expected. When you work with acrylics and you want to do a really bright, detailed sky, sometimes, especially with a, as much blue as we've got going in this one, sometimes you just have to do it in layers. This will be our softness. And then over top of it, you go in with a little more paint and a slightly firmer brush stroke. You know, you don't blend it out so much. And you can kind of drop in the next layer of color and you build these layers in one at a time it depends on how many you really need sometimes it can go really quick sometimes it takes a little bit of time but either way you should end up with a decent result if you just kind of go in layers like this see how that builds up that clean color see that now the advantage of doing it this way is because of course in oil, this is never an issue, but in acrylic, sometimes you can come in with colors that are too harsh. And you know, you just wait, you know what I'm talking about, way too harsh. And this way, by building it up over several layers, you get these little variations which keep it from being harsh. See that? A little finger blending every once in a while is good. There. And so we just continue to work on the sky like this. You can take a nice bright white even, maybe a little bit of our yellow ochre light and white. Let's see what this does. Okay, a lot of paint. I'm just gonna drop that kind of golden color up in the middle of these clouds. So we've got pink on the outside, kind of that softer, almost a brownish pink, but you don't, it doesn't read as brown once you get all the layers on top. See the difference? I'll work that up. And then just do a little blending, but not as much. Kind of just smudge it and leave it there. And if it's not bright enough for your taste, you go over it again. Or simply put it on a little thicker. Now I'm adding just a little more color. Just layers of color over and over again. But you see how I, I brightened this area up down here. And I lost some of my, uh, my cloud action back here. You know, the blues and the purples. So we'll put those back in. But sometimes you just can't worry about it. Sometimes you gotta just get in there and do it, whatever you need to do, and then fix the stuff that you mess up later. And that's exactly my thought here. I just don't wanna have to paint around the blue too much. I was just gonna paint over it, you know, a couple, it did take a couple of coats to cover that dark blue to my satisfaction, you know, to make it nice and bright. But once we got to this point, now you can even brighten it up a little, a little more. But I'm just going in here trying to drop in these little details 
of you know little tiny tiny color changes all over the place mm, isn't that really pretty the more you do the better it looks imagine that see we've actually spent quite a long time on the sky today i wasn't thinking we were going to spend quite so long but every minute i do something i see another thing i want to do and the sky just gets better and better so why not we'll make it a painting about the sky we have a really pretty silhouetted tree up here that's why you see i'm spending a lot less effort right in this area that's why over here matters so much more there we go I'm, I'm a big fan of you know if you've got a tree coming and you know you've got a tree coming don't put your time where the tree is going to go it's a it's not not something i like to do i like to put my time where it's going to count and i realize it's never a bad thing to practice and if you end up covering something up it doesn't matter but when you can help it your time is valuable you know what i mean when you can help it try to try to plan ahead now I'm going to go ahead and take my custom taper around through some more of our, well, the same sky colors that we had going on. There's our yellow ochre light. Here's our cat yellow or red. And I'll tell you what, we've got kind of a blank area here, but I'm going to drop down because I'm anticipating uh, my little land masses right in that area. So we'll kind of lose some of this unfinished area right about there. So you have to imagine our reflections right about there. So here's where I'll start. Now, there's a couple things going on here. You're trying to mimic the colors above, but you don't need to do it perfectly. It just needs to be a suggestion that's good for us, because look at that sky. That would be really hard to replicate. <laughs> yeah, lots of brush strokes. So we're not even gonna try, it's not necessary. All you have to do is scrub, and with this brush, you could use any brush really, but this brush works really well for this. Just scrub horizontally, leaving some of the uh, some of the pretty blues showing, or you can put them back in, doesn't matter. There you have it. Mm. Pretty simple, isn't it? And we're gonna go ahead and cut in with some dark lines. This is, you know, fairly dark. We're gonna have a lot of silhouettes back here. So the, the water and the sky should really be given a little bit of extra attention because they're gonna be the feature today. Actually, I believe that your eye is going to go right to this area when we have that tree. We're going to, we're going to find out, but the rules of composition tell us that, so we'll see if the rules are right. <laughs> contrast, high contrast is where your eye generally goes. Now I've mixed up a soft purple. Well, it's kind of a darker purple. It's not so soft. <laughs> kind of a dark purple. And it's mostly our Prussian Blue Deep and our little Cad Red. But I did put a little bit of our umber in there just just help kind of I don't know tone the colors so that it's not quite the same purple as you would expect up in the sky see how it's a little more on the green side and very dark that's good and you'll notice I'm using a bristle brush a stiff bristle brush this is our little number four bristle I can't even say it our number four bristle brush what that does is it cuts through and leaves just a little bit of that background showing on my brush stroke do you see that I think it's the indication of little, I don't know, see those little scratch marks? And those scratch marks kind of end up looking like mm, random stuff, which is cool. You know, tree trunks and whatever. I like the way that that looks. A little, a little something extra for your acrylic painting. There, I'm just going to work out from these little dark masses. Just work out these little trees just by tapping and smudging. You certainly don't want everything... Um, all lined up symmetrically. Be very careful about that. Good. And while you got this color in the brush before you let it dry out, just give a couple of sweeps here in the water as well. Just to, well, actually not there, but more like down here to start indicating some reflections. Here's actually going to be some land. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a very subtle highlight here. And the photo that I'm working from shows a little bit of green cast. I would have imagined it to be, uh, you know, red or yellow it shows a green cast but i'm going to throw in a couple of reds and yellows just for fun there but i will put the green cast in as well because eh, that's just the way it is <laughs> yeah but i'm going to keep all of these tones very very subtle there see that very subtle you don't need to go overboard when you do this. And then what you can do is just hit it with a little more light. Let me just get our, let's get our yellow ochre light going. Yeah, 
Oh, that looks pretty. So our yellow ochre is a little brighter. I like that. And then we can just tone a couple, see that? Just tone a couple of that area, a couple of those bushes back in that area. That would be a much better way to say that. <laughs> With some purple even. Cool. I'm just going to continue repeating this over and over again. It won't take very long. There's just not that much room to put these. Cool. Another thing we do need to look for is right here at the bottom, there is a little bit of, uh, that's too bright. There we go. There's a little bit of something growing right here at the shore. Now I'm going to load a beautiful dark color. And rather than just reaching only for black, I've got black and blue and our umber and green and red. So pretty much all our dark colors together. And I don't know what you would classify cad red medium as a dark color or a light color. Somewhere in between, I don't know. I guess it works out as both sometimes, doesn't it? Well, today it's it's working like a dark color, at least right this minute. <laughs> anyway, got my angle filbert. I'm going to just drop in these little leaves. If you haven't played around with this, look how messy my fingers are. If you haven't played around with this brush, I suggest giving it a shot because it is one of the best brushes, if not the best, for making quick, large tree leaves because this very unique point Look, depending on which way you go, creates a different leaf shape. But you see how you can do little dabbles and then dots and all these different things. You turn your hand different ways. And you see how that, look at that. See how convincing that looks? It's really cool. I'm going to add more red. So I'm going to go ahead, before I get too carried away here, I'm going to work in, in groups. Go just oh, There's about halfway. Let's go way over half and bring it in. Let's see, I create that little cluster. This has got a nice, all of my brushes for the most part have long handles so that you get way back on them. That's, that's there in case you need, and you probably will need to, but in case you need to get way back on your brush like I do so often, just have a little better freedom. There, so you can't paint tree leaves as well like this. This is terrible. Up here, or back here rather, you get a nice fluid stroke. Not to mention you can see what you're doing when you kind of step back. This is a really good example of where just a little bit of patience pays off big time. So I wouldn't say that we're going slow, but we're not exactly going as fast as we could. And the reason for that is because I, in a painting like this where we've got just a huge, wonderful sunset and not much else going on, very open painting, there's no place to hide. And so when you get these in here, you don't want to overcrowd this area. So what I've done is kind of worked just very slowly looking at my in and out pockets. See, this is the negative space, eh, negative space thing. See all that? That's very important. We have that in the clouds. We have that everywhere, but especially in the big tree. And this is where it really pays off. Your painting will look so good if you do this. Add in a bunch of that negative space. Don't rush it. Make sure you don't overcrowd it with leaves. You want just, well, you do want a lot of leaves. You want them to see how solid they are, but then you want them to fade out when you go to the edges. That makes it look like there's overlapping limbs in the middle. And I was coming down and I thought, well, I'll just fill it in here. But then I decided, nope, I'm going to almost let it come all the way off and then come back in again to help that negative space thing out a little. So there you go. Mm. Nice. Build it in slightly more slowly than you would be used to. On a painting like this, it's well worth your time. Just trust me on that one. You'll notice that this is just a fraction darker than the background so that it shows up. Not by much. And I went ahead and changed to just pure black right out of the tube for this. Plus whatever mixes in. A little blue is okay. That way we, we're insured a very, very, very dark area here. Which we need that contrast otherwise you'll never see these leaves. Cool. Well, and I'm going to bring this down and over here, even over the water, kind of overlap. We'll have grasses and things at the bottom too. We need this overlap. I just thought I'd show you the, uh, the negative space thing. Very important. Now using a nice soft orange, very similar to what we had mixed up over there. I did my best to guess. That's kind of what we came up with right there. I'm just going to drop in sort of a final light on the water and I'll do my best sort of to replicate the, you know, the patches of color. But honestly, 
the water is not that important. Just as long as we get some of this in, I think we'll be just fine. And honestly, a lot of it is already there. I don't even know if we need to do this all around. It's mostly just over here. You know, get a little, I see that big patch of orange isn't really represented. So let's go ahead and get that at least in here. There, some of this just that needed to be cleaned up. We did this in a hurry, this little area. So now it's kind of time to go back and, and mess with it. I will take a little bit of our yellow, which is starting to dry up. And some white. Make a nice bright color. And you see that bright color there? We're just going to throw that just anywhere in here. Kind of to help replicate that area. Just a little, not a whole lot. Cool. That's it. That's really it. It just doesn't take that much to go back to our peach color. And I just want to sort of feather this in. I don't want to lose my reflections. I'm actually really uh, happy with them. So I don't want to, don't want to lose them. Don't want to mess with them. There. When you get something that you like, go out of your way to, to keep it. There's no need to go in there and cover it up. If you like something, boy, just don't mess with it. There. And maybe take just a little of this light pink now, which I just quickly grabbed. Oh, you know what? That purple isn't represented up here. We should represent that purple up here somewhere. There. But anyways, that looks good. And we do need those dark lines that we're leaving in there. To help show the, the ripple, you know, the water is moving, the ripples in the water. Cool. So honestly, you could play with this all day long. <laughs> we kind of already have. <laughs> there. So much fun. Acrylics are very different because you can, I mean, honestly, whether you do this painting in a day or a month, it's the same because your colors dry so quick. So if, if you're struggling to find the time to paint, maybe acrylics is the best choice for you. Maybe because you can really just, you know, stop what you're doing and pick it right back up and it will be no different than if you painted it at all right there in one day. So just a thought. I know a lot of people tell me they don't have any time to paint, although they love to do it, you know. Maybe that's a, maybe that's a good thought for you. <laughs> Give it a try and let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a little bit more of our light color. And I'm just gonna, you know what, purple. Let me mix up a purple. I'll do it with you. A little bit of our Prussian Blue Deep and our Cad Red Medium. And some white. Just regular titanium white, although it is our nice, thick, heavy body paint. There. And with this purple, and actually I didn't tell you, but I'm using my number six flat brush synthetic. So it comes to a beautiful sharp chisel edge. And I'm just gonna drop in kind of a final water line here and a, a ripple or two. Just smudge them with your finger if you want to. Gonna, there, thin it down just a little. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some little blades of grass here at the bottom. Honestly, I don't know how high I want to go with these. So I'm going to start small and build them up because you can always build them up. Well, actually, you could wipe them off if you're quick. But if you're not quick, then it's kind of a project to get them to go away. There. So anyway, we'll just build these up sort of slowly again. It's not like they're difficult. Kind of just relax and paint. There. Once you get the hang of this liner brush, it really, really works well. Of course, one thing I will say, um, oil versus acrylic, the water evaporates out of your brush so fast when you do this. You gotta be kind of quick or just reload a lot. I just reload a lot because you're not actually running out of paint. You're running out of water. All you have to do is just dip it in the water, kind of mush that water into the brush and you're good to go. It's actually very quick. There, I love this long liner brush for this sort of stuff. Just keeps feeding paint. Good. So we'll kind of work in these clumps, everything in clumps, of course. Maybe get some red in there would be pretty. I've got mostly just blue, but honestly, it's just muddy, <laughs> muddy at this point, right? That's okay. Mix all your colors together. Sometimes something good will come out. Sometimes not, but sometimes it does, right? There. Now on these particular grass things, I would love to see maybe just here. Let me actually get a little more water. 
And by the way, you could thin this down with your foundation medium, but if the foundation medium is thicker and water is actually thinner. So I like the water for this. I'm going to add just these little bits of detail here. Just helps the grass to look a little closer, you know? All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching.